Yes, I know I need a haircut. No need to comment that. Hey, y'all. Check it out. Look at this little guy. Look at him go. That's right. I got a little U2's figure coming out real soon. February 18th to be exact. But that's not all. We also got a Kiwi plushie. Look at them. They're not as cute as the real thing, but it's pretty close. And this is Kiwi approved, okay? Kiwi loves playing with himself. And I like to watch. I've been working with U2's for months now uh, on this little figure and this plushie. And I'm super excited for it to come out. And guess what? We're going to do a nice little giveaway to one lucky member of Curtis Town. So all I have to do is go to curtisconnor.u2s.com. Follow all the directions on the website uh, to enter the giveaway. And be on the lookout for when it goes on sale next Friday, February 18th. Okay, folks. You guys like art? Of course you do. You're watching a YouTube video, right? This is art. Believe it or not, this is art. I am an artist. YouTube is art. You know, who needs Banksy when you got... Bay's banks. But like on a genuine and extremely biased note, uh, I think artists are like the most important people in the world. Because what is life without art? It's meaningless, okay? I had a neighbor named Art when I was a kid. He was a very nice man. Art lets us escape the mundaneness of everyday life and it allows us to look inwards and outwards all at the same time. I'm not still talking about my old neighbor. We we need art, like media and shit, just to like get through life. Could you even imagine a world without the Mona Lisa or the ballad of Mona Lisa by Panic at the Disco? A world with no Leonardo da Vinci or the Da Vinci Code or the Da Vinci Twins? I don't want to live in that world. What I'm saying is art is essential. We need art. He's a good neighbor. Also, add an F to the beginning of that word. Even better. But obviously, some aspects of the art world are a little ridiculous, I will admit. You know, whether it's a blue painting with a white stripe down the middle selling for $40 million, or weird dudes spending upwards of $10,000 in camera equipment so they can take scantily clad photos of the girls that never talked to them in high school. At every level of the art world, I think there are some questionable occurrences. And they're usually tied to money. Those are like the only times art feels like a little off. Well, not the only time, but... <laughs> for the most part. Which brings us to the most recent controversial topic in the art world, NFTs. I'm sure you've all heard of them by now. They've been talked about and stuff. But but if you're like me, uh, you still don't understand them and you don't want to do research because that's boring. But since I'm making this video, I decided to do a little research. I know. Thank you. So I'm going to try to do a simple explanation of what they are before we get into the goofy, silly, funny stuff. So NFTs are basically digital pieces of art that are stored on a blockchain, which is essentially like a digital ledger. NFT stands for non-fungible token. So when you compare that to another token like Bitcoin, whereas in if you trade one Bitcoin for another Bitcoin, it's the same thing. It's the same Bitcoin. There's no difference. But NFT is unique. I think that's what it is. <laughs> so most of the time, if an artist is uh, lucky, they will put up their art themselves. They'll go through the process of minting it on the blockchain, where people can then purchase that minted NFT with a cryptocurrency, usually Ethereum. <laughs> and I know, minting? Is that a slang term for chewing gum? Blockchain? You mean a necklace you wear in Minecraft? Ah. I'm aware I'm throwing a lot of terms at you, but I assure you, I am also confused. I also don't understand it. Can we normalize being a fucking idiot? Can we normalize that? Can we normalize being a fucking idiot and not wanting to be better? Try to explain it another way. So a lot of people on the internet have been comparing NFTs to Pokemon cards. That's like an easier way for the brain to grasp it, I think. You know, there's only a certain amount of them made. Uh, some are more valuable than the others. And they're also for little nerdy virgin losers. <laughs> Like for example, this uh, this PSA 10 first edition Dark Charizard that I pulled a few months ago, it's whatever. At the time of filming this, there are only 488 of these that exist in the world in this condition. Even if I were to trade this for like another identical card, it just wouldn't be the same because this is the actual one. Like this is the physical one that I pulled that has like memories attached to it and stuff. But again, it's like hard to compare it because this is a thing. This is like a thing that I can touch with my fingers. So that's the main difference. I guess like a better way to describe it is buying a star. You're obviously not actually purchasing a star. You're just getting a certificate saying that you did. I bought a star, I'll go get it. <laughs> and this video is just me showing the cool shit I have. I bought a star last year to celebrate me hitting a million followers on Instagram because I had this bit where all the followers were going to my ass and then my ass got so big that it detached from my body, flew into space and became a star. So I bought that star, my ass. So I named it Curtis Connors butt and it's in the poo piss constellation. Now, is that hilarious? Yes. Do I own the star? 
No, when an alien species wants to invade a planet in that solar system, they're not like, whoa, hold on, let's call up Kurt really quick, let's see what he has to say about it. I hope what I'm saying makes sense in relation to NFTs. Um, And before we go any further, I want to say I'm not like 100% against the idea like just the, the pure, just theorization, just the idea of NFTs. I'm not against that. You know, I think that it has the potential to be something interesting. Like on paper, or I guess like on a Google Doc, because it's not like a real thing. It's an interesting idea. And I am also a firm believer in artists getting paid handsomely for their work. And when I say paid handsomely, I don't mean like them getting a lot of money. I just want a really handsome man to give them cash. The main controversy surrounding NFTs is the environmental impact. Since it's such a complex process, it takes a lot of computing power to actually convert a piece of art into an actual minted NFT. And that's why I'm into Pokemon cards, you know? At least they give you energy in every pack you open, right? Because like the energy cards. And I'm gonna be completely honest here. I genuinely thought the environmental impact was the only issue with NFTs up until like, really recently, but it's not. There's a lot more because I did research like a nerd. Apparently people are just like stealing people's original artwork and then just putting it up as an NFT like they did it. But dude, I, I swear to God, it, it happens. I could I could say firsthand, someone made an NFT of me, dude. I swear to God they did. It's not up anymore, but I took a screenshot and this is what it was. That was, that was an NFT, an unflattering picture of me with a, a weird circle. Also, the face I'm making in this picture is making it seem like I'm like excited to be trapped in this gradient circle. I am not. I can assure you I'm not. Like the things NFTs have become in a short amount of time is so dystopian and just like depressing and cringe even. So I have scoured the internet for the weirdest dumbest, cringiest NFT content that you that I could find. And uh, we're gonna dunk on it today, dude. The first video I wanna talk about is a clip from The Tonight Show uh, with Jimmy Fallon, where he is interviewing Paris Hilton. So Paris Hilton is on The Tonight Show. You know, she's talking about all the exciting things that's happening in her life. I'm good at like raving and jumping around. <laughs> And then they bring up the topic of NFTs. And dude, I've seen some pretty vapid shit on late night television, especially from our little guy, Jimmy Fallon. But this is a new low. I I got I I jumped in. I know. I heard. I'm so happy I taught you what they were. You did. You taught me what's (laughs) up. And then I bought an ape. I got an ape, too, because I saw you on the show with people and you said you got a moon pay. So I went and I copied you and did the same thing. We said what? (laughs) <laughs> what language is that? What language are you speaking? Yeah, I saw you talk to the people, so I went on moon base and I used all my jizz coins to buy a schnoople. Like, what do you, what do you, what are you saying? And Jimmy says here that he bought an ape, which is in reference to the board, the board ape yacht club, which is like the most. Probably the most popular uh, NFT collection that came out. They're honestly just a bunch of different drawings of monkeys in hats and glasses. It's really nothing special. Again, show me a real life monkey in hats and glasses. Take Take my money. money. But that's what they're referencing when they talk about an ape. But man, it would be so funny if Jimmy Fallon like genuinely misunderstood when he heard about all of his celebrity friends like buying apes. (laughs) And then he's on his late night show like, look, hey, Paris, look, I got an ape. I bought an ape, just like you. <laughs> Jimmy, what the fuck? That's a literal gorilla. I'm the really the spinner. Hey, does your NFT also throw his shit at you? This is That's your mine. ape. Yeah. We debuted. It's really cool. Like, the hat, the shades. Uh, now what? But, How did you pick? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Took the audience so long to applaud. I'm going to throw up. This is That's your mine. ape. Yeah. We debuted. It's really cool. I could have read a fucking book. In the amount of time between him showing off the ape and the audience like applauding, I could have read a fucking whole book. I swear to God, and I'm a slow reader. Also, the way he said it, like, is this, is this your ape? You did? Is this your? Is this it? This That's is your mine. ape. Is this your? Is this your ape? Yeah. 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 Like he's unveiling a fucking newborn child. Like, what is? What are we doing? What are we, guys? What are we doing? Johnny Carson is turning over in his grave right now, dude. We are devolving officially. We we evolved from monkeys, and now we're diverting back to just selling pictures of monkeys for hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then talking about it on the Tonight Show. It's the circle of life. Seriously, Jimmy Fallon. Out of all times, why couldn't you break character during this segment, like you did on every fucking SNL sketch you're in? This is the time you had to like be serious about something. This is my. Ape. It reminded me of me a little bit because I wear striped shirts. Like, I just, who is this segment for, you know? Who is this for? Were they expecting us to just lose our mind when they showed off this picture? You expected us to go ape shit when you showed us your ape shit. So they jerk each other off about their NFTs for a while, but the interview ends with Paris Hilton giving everybody in the audience uh, one of her very own NFTs. And I want to 
want to give one to everyone in the audience. The NFT is like a collage of like all of her favorite memories with her boyfriend. So why the fuck would you want that? But hey, I guess that's cool. Everybody goes home with a digital piece of art. Everyone gets an NFT. But actually, not really. Because guess what? A little bit of knowledge that I found out recently, when you buy an NFT, you aren't paying for a piece of art. Like you don't own it. You don't own the, that drawing of a monkey. When you buy an NFT, you're buying a token that represents that asset. So like essentially when you boil it down, it's like you, you own a hyperlink <laughs> to, to that JPEG. That's like if you bought a painting, but you just got a little certificate saying that you bought it. But like the actual painting is in like your childhood schoolroom in your attic, slowly aging and getting more older and decrepit while you stay youthful forever, you know? And dude, the way people talk about NFTs is just so strange. They're buddies. Like they talk them up like they're literally like the elixir of life. Like it's the, like they're the fucking Tesseract, but they're just pictures of monkeys, man. Any other crypto or NFT words of wisdom? Your digital presence means more than your physical physical presence at this point. Like it used to be you drove, before the internet, you drove around town and if you had the Rolls Royce, like you were like the guy in your town, you know what I mean? But now it's like, we don't really know each other face to face. We only know each other online. And so like, if you have a CryptoPunk as your Twitter picture, you're guaranteed like 10,000 followers that day. And then also everything you say is taken with a little bit more seriousness. I, I'd have to disagree. <laughs> uh, I think it's I think it's the opposite, man. You gotta take me more seriously now. Why is that? I got a picture of a little guy as my oh, profile God. picture. Oh, God. So. <laughs> Holy shit. I make the rules. Also, hey man, not gonna take any advice from a guy in a snapback. That's sort of my golden rule. But the NFT cringe doesn't stop there. No, no, no. There's been a lot of overlap with NFTs and the metaverse. And it's just so interesting to me because all of this is just purely speculative. There is no real utility for NFTs yet. And also the metaverse like doesn't fully exist yet either. Old Zuckerberg himself said it would be like five to 10 years before like all the main features of the metaverse are like readily available. Y'all must be high as shit to get into this NFT stuff, man. Y'all are, are smoking something. <laughs> Hey Mark, what are they smoking? Smoking meat. I was, I was thinking like weed or something. Smoking these meats. Okay. Smoking meat. Speaking of the metaverse and NFTs, I found a fucking gold mine. So let's uh, let's watch this next video. This NFT is changing the game. Meta Girlfriends allows you to have a metaverse girlfriend with their own unique personality. They already sold out of their pre-sale 1,000 NFTs, so the hype is real. They're introducing a brand new feature where you can combine multiple NFTs into a more rare one in something called the Rainbow Room. They're minting tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern, so check it out. Come on, man. Come on, man. Okay, so th this is why dudes are so excited for the metaverse. Because they've never met a girl who wanted to fuck them. <laughs> Meta Girlfriends allows you to have a metaverse girlfriend with their own unique personality. You know who else has their own unique personality? Every girl. <laughs> Just any real girl. I can't begin to wrap my head around this. Like, imagine someone actually thinking that an NFT is their girlfriend. Oh, I'm stuffed, man. That was a great dinner. Thanks for having me over, by the way. Don't mention it, buddy. I'm glad you got to see my new place. I was really excited to meet your girlfriend, though. Well, what's up? She couldn't make it? What do you mean? <laughs> she, She's here right now. What? She's sucking your dick what? right now? Are you kidding? No, I was pointing at this. <laughs> You're dating your phone? I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. Come on, that's ridiculous. I have a meta girlfriend, okay? She's an NFT. Come and on, I know, man. I know. <laughs> Before you say anything, she's a 10, okay? She's a 10 in looks and in price. <laughs> She did cost about 10 Ethereum. That's like $25,000, man. You work part-time at IHOP. You need to get your money back. Oh, you're gonna be eating those words like a delicious stack of pancakes when you catch a glimpse of her, buddy. Check it out. I don't, I don't get it. Is, is that supposed to be you in the picture? <laughs> what do you mean? Babe? Everything okay, buddy? Who is this guy? How could you? After everything we've been through, She's not real. You met my parents? Hey. I even gave you a key to my apartment? Fuck. You sucked my dick under the table? I knew it! Pretty silly, I think. Also, back to this fucking guy. Sorry, I'm not done. This guy's entire TikTok page is about NFTs. And the thing that still pisses me off even more than that is the fact that he's filming in front of a green screen, but he's not even like using the green screen. That's free real estate, brother. What are you doing? Also, that's like internet rule number one, dude. Don't put footage of yourself in front of a green screen. Anybody could fucking put anything there. You know what I mean? Please, I fell down this well and I'm stuck. 
Hey, can you help me? This NFT is changing the game. What? Meta Girlfriends allows you to have a Metaverse girlfriend Wait, with their own I unique personality. They already sold out of their pre-sale 1,000 NFTs, so the hype is real. They're introducing a brand new feature where you can combine multiple NFTs into a more rare one Shut and the something called up. the He's Rainbow me, They're minting tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern, so check it out. Okay, you gonna help me now? What an NFT. I did a little bit more research into this Meta Girlfriends NFT project, and I found some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, number one is this tweet from their official account. Say hello to our newest Meta Girlfriend, pro model Dizzy Miss Liz. Welcome to the Meta Girlfriends family. Please check out her socials and subscribe. Holders of a Meta Girlfriend NFT can private chat with her in our Discord. Awesome. I mean, I do like how they say that you can private chat with her in their Discord. I'm sure you can send a message to her. I don't think she's going to respond, though. They're, they're giving these dudes yet another opportunity to be left on red. And honestly, they fucking deserve it if, <laughs> if they're buying this shit. Are you an incel and an NFT, bro? Fuck, that sucks. But we have something perfect for you. I'm going to go check out their website. I got I got to see what else they're doing. Each meta girlfriend comes with private, not safe for work content. Good. Public mint open. There's... Still 8,000 of it. Wasn't as uh, popping as the guy made it seem. So the hype is real. Okay, Meta Girlfriends represent the mature side of NFT art. They are randomly generated using over 600 traits across 20 categories to guarantee each one comes with a unique personality. Meta Girlfriends are fully clothed and visible from the waist up in public. Having a Meta Girlfriend in your wallet is the key to the members only area, uh, where you'll gain access to view her full body and private, not safe for work content. Bro. <laughs> So that's the public view. That's the members view. And that's the No no fucking way, man. Uh this seems like so much work. D-list and unlock new traits for your meta girlfriend. I think y'all need to D-list and unlock some bitches, bro. I I could do a whole fucking video about that, but we'll move on. I think other than like the main controversies, obviously there's like the whole question about like the actual utility of NFTs, like what could they be? And obviously like not everything in life has to have a function, right? Like my Pokemon cards, they don't fucking do anything. They're just there because I like collecting them and I like looking at them and I like touching them with my little thingies. It's just strange that there's no real like use for them, but there's already these huge price tags attached to them. But obviously that's not accidental. If all the news headlines are like this NFT sold for $2 million and this one sold for fucking $20 million, it like sets the precedent for like the entire market. It tells people that these NFTs are you know, they're supposed to be expensive because they're really valuable. But obviously that only benefits the people who are already in the market and have a lot of money staked in the market, right? And it sucks because this shit happens with collectibles all the time. There was a huge scandal with a video game grading company called Wada Games. You know, they were accused of artificially spiking the cost of retro video games to inflate the market and make more money for themselves. PWCC, a website people use to buy and sell trading cards, they've been accused of shill bidding like countless times. It's like in every sort of niche community that's really passionate. There's a handful of little rats that are just trying to cheat everybody out of as much money as they possibly can and then fuck off to the next thing. Speaking of little rats, let's talk about Gary V. If you don't know who Gary V is, click off this video right now, okay? Do yourself a favor. If you've, if you've made it this far in your life, without knowing who Gary Vee is, you deserve to live the rest of your life in blissful ignorance. But for the rest of us who have been cursed uh, with the knowledge of this man, he's good and bad. He's, he's bad because he's like, he just says the most insane shit, but it's good because he says the most insane shit. So he's, he's the most, he's the easiest person to make fun of, I think. You'll literally just say whatever and act like it's the smartest thing you've ever heard. First internet collected the information. Okay. The second internet created the framework for communication, right? This third thing, this Web3 NFT thing, it's going to capture the consumerization of assets and the stakes are fucking high. Okay, yeah. Let me give you a weird one. If you own a home that is wildly unique and is a $25 million home on a beach or something wild, you NFT that home right now, put into the smart contract that you get 1% okay. of every transaction of this home in perpetuity and the first person yeah. that's gonna buy it from you is gonna be fine with that. What? Okay, sorry in advance, but I've got a millennial moment incoming. But you know that one Michael Scott quote where he's like, Sometimes I'll start a sentence and I don't even know where it's going. I just hope I find it along the way. That is Gary V. There's no way he knew where he was going when he started saying any of this shit. I got a weird one for you. Say you've got an upset tummy right now. Say you have a really upset tummy and you're being a brave little boy about it. You NFT that? You NFT that on the blockchain? And in 10 years time, 
your tummy ache's probably gonna be gone. You wait, he'll say that. You give it a couple of years, he will say what I just said. Also, what the fuck, what the hell does he mean by NFTing that? You NFT that home right now. You got a house? NFT that. What do you mean? It's a verb now? Yo, me and the boys are going NFTing later. You in? <laughs> gonna be nft as fuck it's an adjective now too i think nfting your home does he mean like make it so like people in the metaverse can like live in your home in the metaverse is that what that means because i hope it's not <laughs> i really hope that's not what he means because how fucked up is it that the metaverse doesn't even exist yet and we're already talking about real estate buying real estate more like fake estate <laughs> i thought the whole idea with the metaverse was to like escape the shitty parts of real life and to just do whatever you want in virtual reality. I guess not. You need to buy a house in the metaverse and you're, you know, to afford that house, you need to take out a, a meta mortgage and then you'll have to get a fucking meta job and make a meta resume. And you know, have to you have to meta commute to your meta job. And you don't have enough time to hang out with your meta girlfriend. But you know, Gary V, he's really diving deep into the NFT world. But he's really at the forefront, you know, and he's trying to make NFTs more useful in the real world. And this is how he's doing that. The world's first NFT restaurant just got announced. It's called Fly Fish Club and it's opening in New York. Gary Vee is at the forefront of this and he plans to open the restaurant in 2023. To get into this VIP restaurant, you need to spend at least $12,000 on their NFT. This just shows that the physical world and NFTs keep getting closer and closer. Good, good, good idea. And I'm sure all those people who eat at this NFT restaurant will treat their servers with dignity and respect. And of course they'll leave a big tip because if you've worked in a restaurant before, you know the wealthiest people are the nicest and they tip the most. Nobody would ever order two bottles of Dom Perignon and only tip me a quarter. <laughs> that would never happen. And I'm fucking kidding, obviously. That did happen to me once and rich people are always <laughs> the meanest. That NFT restaurant is gonna be the, the most concentrated room of shitty, annoying people <laughs> in all of New York City. Can you imagine a server like doing their cash out, like going through their tips and they're like, oh, nice. <laughs> It looks like I got a picture of a bond me. Uh, I quit. Because you know what they say, bond me once, shame on you. Bond me twice. No, thank you, I'm full. Also, like, how are they going to know that I own that I own the NFT or not, right? It's called Flyfish Club, and it's opening... Quick little screenshot and in I go to the restaurant eating, eating up, up all, all your scraps. scraps. Speaking of screenshots. You need to stop screenshotting NFTs. Screenshotting NFTs is not the same thing as actually owning it. You can't actually sell an NFT if it's just a screenshot. So no matter how many times you screenshot an NFT, you still can't sell it. Are you sure about that? Myth busted, fucker. Now if I order two bottles of Dom Perignon, I can afford to leave a tip. Oh, I yeah. say for legal reasons, I did not just sell a picture of someone else's art. It was for the bit. Okay, I wanna wrap this up with one more Gary V clip. Let's give it a watch. The reason I came so hard to NFTs is because the sports card industry was pushing me out because they thought I was pumping and dumping when I didn't sell a single fucking sports card. With this world, you could follow me. You could see my behaviors. I wanna replay that first sentence one more time. The reason I came so hard to NFTs. I guess Gary V got that private view if he's coming so hard to NFTs. Also, he just proved my point from before where he was like i left the sports card thing because they hated me because i inflated the fucking market so much and i was just in it for the money and now i'm here and you can see how much money i'm making so it's fine i guess <laughs> but okay i guess i'm wrong because at the end he says this but i don't want the power i don't i do not want it there's nothing in it for me <laughs> that woo at the end there's nothing in it for me <laughs> and that's true there is nothing in it for gary v but that's why I came to this world. But I don't want the power. I don't. I do not want it. There's nothing in it for me. Bro, I can make 30 videos of this. There's so many cringy videos that I just left out because I just for time. But I, you know what? We got to stop this. And I'm going to be the one to start it off. I'm releasing my own NFT collection. But it's a little different, okay? Before you get mad at me, hear me out. It's going to be a little different. They're not on the blockchain. And they're also free. All you have to do is go to free. CurtisConnorNFTs.com and this is a real website. I paid my real money for it and you'll find a whole collection of rare and valuable NFTs that you can trade and or sell to your friends for all I care. We'll have a nice little badge on it so you know that it's legitimate. But here's the catch, okay? The website is only gonna be up for 24 hours. So if you're one of the lucky few that saves an NFT before they're all gone, uh, we'll have no way of knowing because They'll probably be posted on like Twitter and shit where people can just download them 
uh, and screenshot them forever. Um, so, you know what? I think deep down, I'll know. <laughs> I don't know. I think in conclusion, what I'm trying to say, NFTs were exciting for artists and stuff for, I don't know, maybe like, like 30 seconds. But it's yeah another example of a thing's potential already ruined by the ultra rich trying to become even more ultra rich unfortunately i i don't think they're going anywhere i think it's only going to get worse i mean i could maybe see like a, a market crash coming up in the near future i think it has to at some point but you don't have to worry about that because the uh, first con nfts only going up because they're free so it can only go really only go up from there so enough of me let's go to why you actually clicked on this video today's sponsor Current. Hey, aren't old school financial institutions just the worst? They're always hiding information from you. They got all these hidden fees. It's so silly. And that's why Current is so great. Current keeps it simple, authentic, and direct. There's no hidden fees, no hidden anything to be exact. And you guys have heard me talk about Current before, but today we got some very special news. As you know, Current has a bunch of incredible features you can't get anywhere else, including their brand new feature called interest pretty groundbreaking stuff man you can earn four percent apy on your money how incredible is that that's four percent interest on your money that's just sitting around doing nothing oh is that not enough you want me and current to give away five thousand dollars to you guys sure we'll do that then fine and all you have to do is download the app and use my code curtis interest for your chance to win and also so you don't miss out on that four percent so yeah again click the link in my description sign up for current using my code curtis interest to enjoy the future of banking and also you get your own cool little current visa card look at it it's so cool so yeah you already heard it check the description sign up use the code because everybody wins here man it helps me out it helps you out it helps current out everybody we're all giving each other a big hug uh so thank you current for sponsoring this video and so many others in the past hope you guys check them out uh, all right back to me all right thank you so much for watching the video if you enjoyed it please press the like button because believe it or not one like equals one nft that i will screenshot and you fucking can't do anything about it you can leave a comment let me know what you thought about the video you know let's fucking talk about this shit man it's crazy it's weird and people are more knowledgeable on it than i am you can press the subscribe button if you want because i make a video all the time and as soon as you press the subscribe button you become a valued citizen of curtis town it's not a real thing yet but in the metaverse it will exist also you can check the description the other things i do my weekly podcast called very really good it's got a new we just hit 400k on that channel got a new fucking studio it looks sick my youtube's that's coming out next week enter the giveaway uh my twitter instagram all that bullshit all right that's it i would stick around but i have to go um, I have to go eat some fake sushi with my meta buddies. Bye-bye. <laughs>